It is an honor and delight to be here with my friend and teacher, Professor Richard Schwartz, who is a professor emeritus of mathematics, now retired at, at the College of Staten Island, president emeritus of Jewish Veg, co-founder and coordinator of the Society of Ethical and Religious Vegetarians called Serve, and is best known as a Jewish vegetarian activist and advocate for animal rights, United States and Israel, great author and teacher of Powerhouse, now living in Israel. Thank you for joining me, Dr. Richard Schwartz. Well, it's my pleasure and uh, kudos to all the wonderful things you're doing. And sometimes wonder, are you really just one person because you're doing so many different things? It's just unbelievable. Thank you, that's very kind of you. So let's jump right in here. How, how bad is the environmental situation right now? Is this something to be concerned about? Oh boy, it's absolutely something to be concerned about. To give you one example, there's a group, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. This is a group made up of the top climate experts from all over the world. And they're saying that we may have only until 2030, perhaps only about 10 years, to make quote unquote unprecedented changes in order to avert a climate catastrophe. And we're seeing facts on the ground, by the way, we're in a tremendous heat wave just starting here the next five days, which is in the middle of May, close to 90 degrees. And uh, temperatures have been increasing every, every decade since the 1970s. The last five years are the top five years since temperature records have been kept, starting in about 1880. Glaciers melting, the polar ice caps are melting, and uh, getting more storms, more severe storms, floods, droughts, wildfires. So this is a big, big issue. One tremendous threat is that the climate experts say we may be very close to an irreversible uh, tipping point where climate spins out of control. So it's super serious. And just one other thing, just a week ago as we speak here on May 13, 2019, an environmental committee from the UN indicated that the ecosystems are threatened uh, probably more than ever before, with as much as a million species on the brink of extinction. So it's, it is extremely, extremely serious. Wow. Yeah, th this is very scary stuff. Do you, do you believe at this point that um, anything can be preserved or reversed, or do you think that all children and grandchildren are necessarily doomed? It's hardly optimistic. Uh, a lot of people are in denial. There's a saying that denial is not just a river in Egypt. Many people are affected. Uh, uh, moving, uh, uh, deck chairs, moving the deck chairs on the Titanic as we head toward that uh, iceberg. So there's many, many problems. One problem is that there are many they call positive feedback loops that uh, can lead to that irreversible tipping point. Just one example, all the wildfires out there in California, that's in a triple threat to climate change in a way. Trees are being destroyed and there's sinks for carbon dioxide. And as the trees burn, they give off carbon dioxide. And all the buildings, all the infrastructure destroyed, that would require much fossil fuels to be built. By the way, Israel, unfortunately, is especially threatened because much of the infrastructure and population rises, that can be devastating. Also, the experts, climate experts, predict that it's going to be warmer and drier, hotter and drier in this area. And the military experts say that this could increase the uh, possibility of violence, terrorism, and war. Matter of fact, the military experts think that climate change could be a catalyst for violence, terrorism, and war because unfortunately there's going to be tens of millions of desperate fleeing refugees fleeing from the wildfires, droughts, storms, and the other effects of climate change. By the way, I'm especially concerned. I've been in Israel now about two and a half years, and we've been blessed with three grandchildren getting married. And just oh. yesterday, May 12th, for the first time, I became a great grandfather. Amazing. So Amazing. Mazel tov. Yeah, so you care about the future. You really care. So let me ask you, what, what can each of us, what can we do in our lives, and what can we advocate for on a systemic societal level? This has become a central focus of averting a climate catastrophe. Everything we do, from recycling to using uh, more efficient light bulbs, to trying to uh, avoid driving as much as possible, carpooling, sharing rides, uh, uh, better mass transit, 
And as you mentioned, President Emeritus of Jewish Veg, formerly Jewish Vegetables in North America, I very strongly advocate for a shift to veganism. I'm working on a book on that right now. By the way, Israel is the world capital for veganism, 5% in any other country of vegans. And to be a vegan is to be most consistent with Jewish teachings on preserving our health, treating animals with compassion, and conserving food, and helping hungry people. So that can make a big difference. Two quick studies on that. In 2006, there was a UN Food and Agricultural Report, Livestock's Long Shadow, that pointed out an amazing, amazing thing in a way. They said that animal agriculture actually emits more greenhouse gases in CO2 equivalents than all the cars, planes, ships, all the means of transportation worldwide. And when you think of all the traffic jams of planes flying out every minute somewhere in the world, that's significant. And in 2009, there was a World Watch magazine front uh, cover story by two environmentalists associated with the World Bank. And they indicated that the livestock sector is responsible for at least 51% of all the human-induced greenhouse gas emissions, taking into everything like the cutting down of the tropical rainforest to create pasture land and land to grow feed crops for the animals. Wow. So, um, yeah, please go ahead. Okay, so again, it's a very serious, serious problem. Yeah. So everything possible has to be done, as I say. Uh, I'm working on a book on veganism, and uh, by the way, if anybody would like to get involved with what I'm doing, help with that book perhaps, they can contact me at veggierich at gmail.com. That's B-E-G-I-E-R-I-C-H at gmail.com. Veggierich at gmail.com. So let me ask you, um, what do Jewish values have to say about all of this? Okay, well, there are very strong Jewish values, of uh, teachings on the environment, for example, Right at the beginning, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, it indicates the human being was in the garden of Eden to the land, so to guard it. We have to be in effect, show me how Dhamma, according to the earth, partners with God in protecting the world. Then there's a very powerful teaching in Deuteronomy, which is chapter 20, verses 19 and 20, which indicates that even in wartime, many things, people think anything, you know, just anything goes, you've got to win that war. It indicates we are not to destroy three trees two trees to build a battering ramp to try to overcome an enemy fortification. And I think to the great credit, the Jewish sages extended that specific thing and indicated a general prohibition against waste called Bautash do not waste or destroy unnecessarily. So we have those strong teachings. And then there's a midrash that indicates God took Adam into Gan Eden, and Gan Eden after creation, he said, I've created this world for you. Do not despoil or destroy it because if you there'll be nobody after you to take care of it. Every day in the daily prayers, it indicates that God's compassion is over the earth and all the creatures, all the animals, etc. And of course, it's a very important Jewish teaching, as you know, that we have to imitate God's compassion. It indicates in uh, Psalms 145.9, God is good to all, and his compassion is over all of his works. So we make a very strong case in terms of Judaism that uh, we've got to protect the environment. And uh, we, another teaching of Jews, I'd be Rachmanim, B'nai Rachmanim, compassionate children of uh, compassionate ancestors, and therefore, very strong. The way that animals are raised today in factory farms, so contrary to Jewish teachings. And we know also there's so much research showing the negative health effects of animal diets. So, uh, strong Jewish teachings, and it needed as never before to be applied to uh, turn back the greenhouse gases, turn back climate change, so that we can have a decent world, a livable world for children and grandchildren. By the way, the increase now, you mentioned all the storms that's going on, that's due to only an increase of about one degree Celsius, or 1.8 degree Fahrenheit. Unfortunately, we're on a path, the experts say, where it could be three, four, five degrees centigrade, seven, eight, nine degrees Fahrenheit, and that would be pretty much almost an unlivable world 
with uh, heat waves galore and more and more storms and droughts. So this is the the call of the hour in effect that uh, thank God we have these powerful Jewish teachings. They must be applied to uh, a very climate catastrophe and a very much imperiled world on a sustainable path. Beautiful. So uh, just my last question for you, Dr. Schwartz. You know, uh, I, I think of you as the grandfather of the Jewish vegan movement, that for decades you've been leading us forward. I wonder, who were some of the other, some of the other early uh, uh, Jewish vegan advocates from decades ago? Were you all alone as a prophetic voice, or were there others along with you decades ago? Well, there's always voices. There's one, Jonathan Wolf who was really the founder of Jewish Vegetarians of North America. He gave a course on Jewish Judaism and Vegetarianism at Lincoln Square Synagogue in Manhattan. I think it was uh, like 1979 or so, and I attended that. And I just saw the case for vegetarianism and that I would see in terms of veganism was so tremendously strong. Uh, you know, I feel standing on the shoulders of giants, we have so many great quotations. And again, the Judaism strongly teaches Take care of your health. It's the only mitzvah has the word my old. Very much be diligent, take care of your health. You've got to treat animals with compassion. Again, the, one of the signs of being Jew, Jewish, they say, is to be a compassionate person. And the environment, uh, got to, God is concerned about the world. We have to imitate God and be concerned again to be a, a guardian of the earth, in effect, co partner with God in protecting the environment. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, we have seen, we have so much to be worried about, the fight against, but also so much to be hopeful about you. So much progress has been made and we're going forward, as you mentioned, in Israel and here in North America, that we should, you know, stay optimistic and keep plowing forward. We wish you blessings of, of good health and strength that you should continue to be an advocate for many decades to come. Well, tell Dara Bauer, and I wish you much, 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 much uh, continued success. And as I say, I believe what you're doing, and she only have a muscle and blessings and be able to continue in good health. Amen. Amen.